Good morning and welcome to This Week. Breaking overnight, the verdict is in. We, the jury, find George Zimmerman not guilty. Protests break out after the high-stakes trial that gripped the country. Justice for people! As America faces big questions now about race, justice, and gun control. Then, new low, the gridlock, the squabbles. These are dark days in the history of the Senate. Was it Washington's worst week yet? We go to the center of the fights and take you inside the closed-door meetings. Plus our powerhouse roundtable on Spitzer's second chance. I've always believed the public had forgiveness. And the Take No Prisoners book that has all of Washington talking. Right here this Sunday morning. This week with George Stephanopoulos. Reporting from ABC News headquarters, George Stephanopoulos. And we begin with that breaking news overnight. After more than 16 hours of deliberations, a jury of six women delivered their decision. Not guilty of murder, not guilty of manslaughter. George Zimmerman is a free man. This trial has captivated and divided the nation. And there were some protests overnight. But from Washington so far, a muted reaction. And in Florida, the first words from the Martin family. Trayvon's mom tweeted that this was her darkest hour. His father said, even though I am broken hearted, my faith is unshattered. I will always love my baby, Trey. We have all the fallout this morning from our ABC News team, the Senate Judiciary Committee and the Congressional Black Caucus, our powerhouse roundtable and the Martin family lawyer. ABC's Matt Gubman, who's covered this trial all the way, starts us off from the courthouse in Sanford, Florida. Good morning, Matt. Take us inside that courtroom last night. Good morning, George. That courtroom was intense. So many eyeballs on it, but it wasn't always this way. This wasn't always headline news. This began as a routine homicide in a small Florida town that ignited this national debate about race. Now, last night in that courtroom, as those six female jurors filed in, you could see the tension on the prosecutor's the face, on the defense's the face. Everybody looked tired. Now, Florida, those jurors ultimately made a decision not based on race, but about the law. They decided that the state did not have enough evidence to convince them that George Zimmerman should be convicted on second second degree murder or manslaughter. And just after that was read, you saw George Zimmerman with a very muted response. And then once he started hugging his family and his attorneys, you saw him break a smile there. Now, noticeably absent from the courtroom last night, Trayvon Martin's parents, George. And, and Matt, the security situation in Sanford has been so tight. Everyone's still on high alert. Very much so, especially the family of Trayvon Martin. Now, there was a reason that they weren't in the courtroom last night. We were told from the sheriff's office here and from their attorneys that the tenor and the severity of the death threats against Trayvon Martin's family have increased, and they felt that it was safer for them to keep them away from the courthouse and to bolster their security. Not just them, Zimmerman and his family, also the target of death threats. Now, his attorney told me that... George Zimmerman may be a free man. He may have had that ankle bracelet cut off and taken off of him, but he's still walking around with a bulletproof vest, and no matter what happens over the next couple of years, that man may still have to live in hiding. George. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. Let's get more reaction now from Benjamin Crump, the attorney for Trayvon Martin's family. Mr. Crump, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we know, as you've said, the family is heartbroken. They are still under heavy security. Uh, do they accept the verdict, and what do they want people to know this morning? Well, they are trying to make sense of it all, George. They want people to know that they're going to continue to fight for the legacy of their son, that he had every right to walk home from the 7-Eleven and not expect to be profiled and followed by a strange man. Um, they are trying to, like many parents, explain to the young people in their family what just happened what is this about that a child can't have Skittles and a can of iced tea and walk home and not have a bullet lodged in his heart and his killer not be held accountable for profiling and following him? What? And so that's what they're dealing with, and that's what most parents in America are dealing with. And this we know they're, they're, you know, still grieving right now. When you say they're going to fight for their legacy, what form is that going to take? Will you be filing a civil lawsuit against George Zimmerman? And do you want the Justice Department to have a civil rights investigation? Well, right now they're concentrating on trying to get through this very trying time, George. They have a Trayvon Martin foundation that they 
have been working tirelessly on because they know they had no power in the court system. They had to depend completely on the justice system and pray that it would work for them as it worked for everybody else. And so the one thing they can control is this foundation and Tracy and Sabrina have been trying to do that work so they can make sure there are no other children who get killed as a result of senseless gun Decision violence. Decision yet on filing a home. civil lawsuit? Well, they are going to certainly look at that as an option. They, they deeply want a uh, sense of justice. They deeply don't want their son's death to be in vain. I mean, they are still in disbelief about his death, and now they're in disbelief about this verdict. Um, it's just one of the things they have to deal with there in church this morning, praying, trying to turn to God, a higher authority, to make sense of it all. Are, are you satisfied with how the prosecutors handled this case? Any concern that they overreached and they should have pursued lesser charges as well? Well, George, I think that the prosecutors are uh, very seasoned uh, prosecutors, and they, in their summations, cut right to the heart of the matter what this case was really about. When Prosecutor John Guy said, if the roles were reversed and Trayvon Martin would have fallen and profiled and shot George Zimmerman in the heart, what would the verdict have been? And that's the question that everybody is asking. That's why the whole world was watching this case to see if everybody can get equal justice, well, not know, just certain people. It's inter and so that's troubling, George. It's interesting you bring that up because Mark O'Mara did speak out last night on precisely that question. Take a look. I think that the things would have been different if George Zimmerman was black for this reason. He never would have been charged with a crime. What's your reaction to that? George, if you go to any courtroom in America on any given day, you will see the number of African-American males being convicted on not much evidence at all. Not that it's right, but you will see that nobody in America worries that black men won't be convicted in court. That is not a big issue. Now, black victims worry about if they are victims to uh, others outside of their community, whether they will be convicted. But I, I challenge anybody to go to courts all over America and just sit in the back and watch how the justice system plays out when it comes to uh, black males. So no doubt in your mind that race was at the center of this trial? Well, I think we would be intellectually dishonest, George, if we don't acknowledge the racial undertones in this case. There is a reason why everybody was watching this case, and they wanted to see if everybody got equal justice. Now, you know, we have to accept the rule of law. There is no guarantee at justice. I told Trayvon's parents that from the beginning. We just have a chance at justice. But we do want people to know that children should be able to live on this earth, walk on this earth, and not feel that they're going to be profiled by what they were or what ethnicity they belong to. And that has to be something we have to progress from. Where do we go from here? Do we take steps forward to make sure this never happens again? Or do we regress and say the precedent is set where you can shoot little <clears throat> minority boys and nobody be held accountable? Mr. Crump, thank you very much for your time this morning.